Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Rob Ham here again today. We're going to talk about the Fujifilm Evo, this Instax hybrid camera, digital printer, hybrid analog, Instax mini film guy. This thing is a lot of fun. We're having a great time with it. And I'm here to share with you five more things I absolutely hate about this camera. Now, in the middle of doing all this, we're working on a photography composition guide. It's in the background, so stick around, like, and subscribe if you'd like to see that. Also, if you'd like to support this channel, don't forget to hit up those Amazon links down below. The reality is that a couple of weeks ago when I got this camera, I had my reservations. I've done several videos on it, and you can actually see my opinion progress as we go through. However, I didn't count the little camera out just from the get-go. It does have a small sensor, and that sensor is crap for digital photos, but it's excellent for printing on the analog print medium, which is in Stax Mini Film. I even don't mind using the digital zoom printed on the Instax medium, right? But as a digital camera, it is terrible. Anything within the last decade, ever since the HTC One M7, will probably give you a better digital image. But when we're talking about Instax film, we're not talking about digital. Sure, there are some things I wish Fujifilm would have done differently. We're gonna talk about them here. And I've got five more things coming up right now. Before we get into that, I'm gonna put this hit right now at the front. People ask me all the time, what accessories am I using with the Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo? I'm gonna share that with you right now. I use the Lanzi LumaCube on the front. The reason I use the LumaCube is because I have it. It only costs about 30 bucks if you wanna get one. There's a new Gen 2 version out, which is better. So don't get the L1 model. And it comes with a bunch of accessories. It's actually quite a bit like the LumaCube Pro. Um, but I don't think it's built as well. And in addition to that, I also have this Pixel G1S Pixel, which is a RGB light. Both of these are constant lights. They work well. The problem is if you get any of them that are made out of metal, you will be doing yourself a disservice. It just weighs too much to go on the camera. The camera is built out of plastic. We'll talk about that in a minute. And this is too heavy for it. Get yourself an El Cheapo LED light, preferably an RGB light, so you don't have to use these color gels, and then go have a good time. People ask me about whether or not I use a lens cover, and no, I do not. There's no lens cover. I don't think that one is necessary for this camera. That's a story for another video. And I'm kind of not concerned about how I carry the camera because I want to see just how long it will last in a professional's environment photographing weddings throughout the summer. So now that we've got that out of the way, we're just picking up from my left off spot of things that I find aggravating about the camera. Uh, number one, overall slow operations. The processor in the camera is super slow. This means that it does not transition from shooting mode to playback mode, or even between picture to picture when shooting very quickly. Couple that with the really weird implementation of the back button, not being a half press in all situations, but sometimes being a half press on the shutter button means that you're gonna just confuse yourself until you get into a rhythm with the camera. This has actually happened with me on photo shoots with the camera. I took several photos in a row just attempting to get back to the shooting screen because the camera's so slow. Number two then, the real. Actually, this is something that bugs me. In the camera, being that it is so very limited, we have some great exposure controls in the uh, plus and minus two exposure value stops, but we could have had hue saturation and luminance control, or at least a highlight and shadow control. Uh, Fujifilm has done this many times. They put it on all their other cameras, and Fujifilm makes cameras. If you guys are just used to instant cameras, no, <laughs> Fujifilm makes pro-level, prosumer, pro-level, real cameras, all the way up to medium format and they can't get this right in an Instax camera, believe me, it does matter. Number three, the plastic lens. Well, actually, I've done a lot of research. People want to say, because Fujifilm says that the lens is glass, okay, so we can see it reflecting there. This outer element to all of my testing is not glass, it is plastic. The internal lens over the sensor is a lens on sensor unit that's glass. I actually think that the use of a plastic outer piece is very important here, but I'm putting this in the negative column because so many people get it wrong. Fujifilm, I believe they have misled us. Fujifilm, if you're watching and I'm incorrect, I would love for you to continue to respond to my emails and answer these questions so that I don't have to guess about it. Speaking of glass, number four, I believe here. Yeah, we'll call it four. Speaking of glass, 
Number four problem is that the actual camera does not focus well through a window, like through glass. So if you're focusing in a car out a window to get a shot outside and you're in the passenger seat or something, you shouldn't do that while you're driving probably. But, <laughs> but if you do, um, you'll notice that it has a difficulty focusing through the glass. This is because it's contrast-based autofocus, which is on there. It's also center point autofocus or face detect only. So it's focus and recompose or face detect. And that all runs off contrast-based autofocus. And that means that if their window's groggy or if there's a reflection or if something like that, and it's, it's dirty or something, then it's going to pick up that and focus on that rather than focus through at infinity. And since there is no manual focus on here, not even like they do on the Ricoh GR series where you can focus using the wheel up or down, you have no ability to choose where it's gonna focus. I think manual focus could have been a good option, at least to infinity or to its close focusing distance. That way you could get infinity when you needed it. And number five. Mm. Number five is it feels cheap and light. It absolutely does. The Mint TL70 is built like something beautiful. It's a piece of artwork. It's gorgeous. It does a primarily plastic construction internal frame with these metal accents. Whether or not they're metal, they're plated plastic or some kind of metal, I can't tell because I haven't ruined the camera to find out. But over four years of use, they have held up to dings and scratches. It leads me to believe that it's a metal rigid frame. Then it has these polyurethane leather, leather or these soft touch pads all over the side with a, some other plastic elements that you touch. It's just a great job. And it's only $389. It's $180 more than this and you get, you get a lot more for the camera, specifically in the lens. And it's got its quirks too. Watch my 40 almost videos on this camera so you can learn how to use it if you choose to get one. Now, that being said, I'm talking about build quality and construction. This camera could have been great. I've said it a bunch of times. It could have been absolutely excellent. And I like this camera quite a bit. The problem is Fujifilm didn't go far enough. The cheap and plastic build construction goes into exactly why my first tip was do not use a metal uh, LED panel because it's too heavy. The density, the weight of it will actually break the poor little hot shoe mount that's right there. You can see it physically canting back and forth. Now, this smaller uh, LED light with this lower center of gravity fits on this hot shoe perfectly and it swings around on my hip. No problem when on my sling. This would break off in five seconds. I guarantee you, I get out there running around, this would break off. It's too much weight on that fulcrum, which is created right there. The build quality should have been improved. Fujifilm should really, you really should, you know, shame on you, Fujifilm. You stopped when it could have been great. This build quality should have at least included soft touch around the plastic parts. And for $200, 200 real dollars on an Instax camera with a 10 year old, I'm assuming here, watch my video about the 28 millimeter F2 lens, quote unquote, and one fifth in image sensor. I believe this sensor is one of the ISO cell sensors that was used in the generation of the HTC One M8. And I did a, a video about that. That's the one I believe it is. But a 10 year old sensor, pennies on the dollar, and we couldn't even get more grippy texture. The whole thing, that's creaking just from twisting it. There's no racking, there's no creaking. It doesn't creak. Heck, even the Fujifilm Instax Mini 90 is built better. Hardly any creaking. And it's got a soft touch body. So all in all, I really like this camera, even with all of its faults. I've been using it on location and continuing in my tradition of giving Instax Mini gifts. I do. When I get my bride and groom and we do our first look or things like that at the end of the wedding day, guess what? We've got nice portraits to give them on uh, this camera now from the Instax Mini Evo. The nice part that I like about it as a digital camera, it makes it easy to preview my image, get the image I want, do some adjustments in camera, and print it off. Guys, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe, like, use the Amazon links below. This may be the outro, but don't forget to check out back there. We've got a composition series coming about great wedding photography. If you're an aspiring or new photographer and you're brand new to photography, you'll want to subscribe to make sure that you're around and get notified when this pops. Guys, I'm Rob. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.